Hi everybody, this is Bastion and this is an annotation of the game you just saw me play against uh, an engine called Arasan. And Arasan is uh, rated about 2500 ELO. And I'm playing black, so white starts out with the queen pawn move d4. And all of a sudden I remembered I did a video on the uh, Leningrad Dutch a few days ago against an engine that was sadly underpowered and I've had a few requests to um, play the Leningrad Dutch against a stronger engine so I play f5 which is the Dutch defense and white plays g3 so this is a common reply to um, the Dutch defense where white uh, fianchettos uh, his bishop so I play knight to f6 bishop to g2 g6 getting ready to fianchetto as well knight to f3 and bishop to g7 and once again the Leningrad Dutch is when um, we see the Dutch defense and uh, fianchetto against the queen pawn move So white castles and I castle. C4. So white is trying to gain control of the center. And D6. And once again D6 is a supporting move for uh, either a E5 or a C5 pawn break. Also we're noticing this bishop has become activated and is currently protecting the F5 pawn which is useful in some cases because otherwise I have to um, recapture with uh, my G palm which will leave my king exposed in some variations so I um, typically play d6 in these positions white plays knight to c3 now at this point it's uh, difficult for black to fianchetto his second bishop for instance if b6 were to be played to fianchetto right away white can play knight to g5 and we can see he's already attacking uh, the rook on a8 and then black is not lost but has to play the awkward c6 move which basically um, prevents black for, uh, of successfully fianchettoing his bishop and after um, d5 the pawn can become under attack as well so fianchettoing his second bishop is typically bad for black under these conditions at the very least black should play knight to c6 to protect uh, the b7 pawn so that's exactly what was played white plays d5 immediately challenging the bishop I played knight to a5 now we're seeing the diagonal of uh, white's bishop being blocked by the pawn queen to a4 attacking the knight and c5 now this protects the knight on a4 but after pawn takes pawn we can see that once again this bishop may become very active and dangerous so I recapture knight to g5 so it is activating his bishop also his knight is in an attacking position on g5 and I want to take care of that right away so I'm playing h6 and the knight retreats to h3 h3 because he doesn't want to block uh, the bishop again so if you take a look at uh, my pawn shield uh, all my pawns are in the 6th or 5th rank so um, in defending the pawn island has advanced and I've decided to use this pawn island um, as an attack as a pawn storm to attack the enemy king later on in the game 
So I play g5, advancing um, another pawn. So already we can see that black uh, white's knight has become trapped in uh, the current position. White plays bishop takes knight, and by doing this is gaining a pawn, because pawn recaptures, now queen takes. Also white has gained tempo with an attack on uh, my rook, bishop to d7 regains that tempo, attacking the queen. So the queen moves to um, g2. Now the queen on g2 has uh, taken over the role of the bishop and is um, controlling the diagonal. Also it's protecting the knight on h3 against, among other things, the attack of um, a bishop on d7. Just keep in mind that this knight is still trapped so um, it's logical for white to try and protect it for exchanges because it can't move it to safety. So I continue with the pawn storm, f4, trying to crack open um, the pawn shield protecting white's king. Keep in mind that I'm still not allowing any escape squares for uh, the knight on h3. So black recaptures my pawn, hoping that if pawn takes pawn, knight recaptures and uh, the knight is safe. So we can understand why white recaptures the pawn. Now, the attack on the knight is possible, but white did a good job protecting it. But now I play queen to c8. And this does two things. One, it creates an attack on the pawn on c4. So I can regain my lost pawn, but more importantly, I've created a battery on the trapped knight on h3. And the knight can't move yet, because f4 is still covered by his own pawn. So this is one um, basic strategy, attacking the knight. But... White takes the pawn on g5, realizing the knight is lost. I recapture. And white recaptures my pawn on g5. So now I've gained a minor piece, but I've lost three pawns in doing so, equalizing the material. But what's even worse, I've lost my pawn shield. And white has a queen immediately opposite to my knight. So, under normal conditions, going after the trapped knight, at this cost, would have been bad. However, I'm combining the battery with a second basic strategy, and that's the skewer. Because I can play bishop uh, to h3 anyway. And now either the queen or rook are lost. So, white needs to move the queen. Knight to h5, gaining tempo on the queen. Now keep in mind that bishop takes rook immediately is possible, but it's probably not too best for a black, because after pawn takes knight, rook recaptures, and king takes bishop. Black has some issues with the queen still on the board, and he cannot move his own bishop because of um, the discovered check. Now, with the king in the open, it's very likely that this position is a, a draw. So, I need to get um, the queen off of the board. I'm, trying, I'm going to try to do so before exchanging any more material. So, knight to h5, gaining tempo on the queen. Queen to h4, attacking the knight. 
and only now bishop takes rook. Now there are two possibilities. If black tries queen to h5, recapturing on h5, I can play queen to h3, which will threaten mate, forcing white to recapture the queen, which in turn will allow black to activate his bishop and avoid any draws or uh, attacks by the enemy queen. And under those conditions, black will have a, a good game. So taking on the knight is a mistake. The engine doesn't do so and takes on the bishop as he should. And now bishop takes knight. Pawn recaptures. I've created isolated doubled pawns. And queen to f5. Again, the knight cannot be recaptured because of the mate threat. White plays f3 to prevent any attacks on the pawn. Knight to f4. Now, this brings the knight into an attacking position. The idea behind it is that if, say, a random move is played, say a3, a very simple tactic could be queen to h3 check getting the queens off of the board with better play for black. More complex would be if um, a3 were played, say a random move. Tactics are possible as well instead of a slow but winning endgame. Say Knight takes pawn on e2, white recaptures, queen takes pawn check, king to d2, queen to g2 check, king to d3, queen to f1 check, king to c2. So we're seeing the king being forced back. Rook to b8, cutting off the B file and white is as good as lost. So that's also possible. But black exchanges the minor white exchanges the minor pieces immediately. Bishop takes knight. Queen recaptures. Again, trying to exchange queens. And finally, black takes on the queen. And I'm happy to see him do so. He could have offered um, a longer game after playing queen to h5, trying to look for a forced um, draw, which will allow queen to g6 or uh, even push the pawn, after which black should play queen to f5, preventing both queen to g6 and the pawn advance. So, um, but, uh wasn't forced to exchange the queens, but we can see that in this position it's also very uh, difficult for him to keep attacking the king on g8, even if it's somewhat exposed. But white exchanges, rook recaptures. Finally, with uh, the queens off of the board, I have a winning endgame. So the game continues with c5. I take the pawn. King to f2, rook to c4. Attacking the pawn. Rook to c1, protecting the pawn. a5. Now keep in mind that this rook cannot move uh, for the next few moves because otherwise he lose the pawn. e4. Rook to b8. This of course threatens a fork between uh, the king and the pawn. 
So rook to c2, a4, again advancing the pawn, and the point is to advance the pawn to a3, and then get my rook to um, b2, attacking the rook, the king, in some cases with a discovered check if the rook moves, and attacking the pawn. And if rook takes rook, pawn recaptures and I'm ready to promote. So, of course, if the pawn advances to h3 to block that idea, I can simply pay, play um, rook to b3, forking both pawns. So there's no real defense to it. White needs to uh, bring his king into the defense. King to e3, a3, h4, rook to um, b2, king to um, e3. Now the rook can still escape to uh, a4. Rook takes pawn recaptures and the king arrives just in time to stop the promotion. I can grab a pawn, technically and temporarily being a pawn up, but after king to b1, both pawn and rook are under attack, so the rook needs to move, and black can recapture the pawn, and this is the best defense that white had against it, but um, I've managed to exchange uh, one rook for um, white's rook, leaving me with the only active piece on the board and uh, two pawns were exchanged. So I can just attack all the other pawns. King to um, b6 in order to create a promotion thread, but if nothing else, my king can step up just in time. And at this move, white resigns. So that was my game using um, the Leningrad variation of the Dutch defense against a stronger engine. And combining some simple strategies uh, in order to get some tactics and win the game. So I hope you enjoyed the game. Thanks for watching and have a great evening.